welcome to Actual Spinster. My name's Anna Marie. A couple weeks ago I asked people to ask me for book recommendations and I got like a couple so I'm gonna make this video and yeah try and recommend people some books. This is kind of a terrifying thing to do but it's also something I actually like love doing but because this is so public I'm like everybody's gonna be able to know whether these are like bad or good recommendations whereas normally you know you just recommend a book to like one person but I've also I've, I've provided a couple options for people so hopefully it should be okay also one more thing before I start I, I asked people to send me their favorite color alongside like their recent favorite books and what they were like maybe looking for if they had a specific thing that was a very interesting exercise for me because a I love to think about color but b because um, a lot of people said green was their favorite color so it's interesting anyway <laughs> okay so we'll start with Shannon's request she said that her favorite color was green favourite recent book was How To Be A Victorian and that she was looking for books focusing on the daily life of everyday people in the historical era, preferably focused on workers' rights. And all of my recommendations are like UK based and that's just because like that's sort of my area of knowledge I guess. But the first thing I thought was this book which is a non-fiction book and it's The Women in the Room, Labour's Forgotten History by Nan Sloan. This is very much like about workers' rights but it's also, it's also sort of about like Labour's political formation I guess which doesn't sound particularly interesting but I do think it is and I think it's written in like a really just like quite accessible easy to read way and there's also some nice images of the women involved and she goes back quite far too so you get like quite a lot of context which is I think really nice because you get sort of like 1860s trade union stuff before getting into like the early 20th century of like Labour's actual culminated history. I thought another book that also had quite like a greeny vibe was Far From the Madden Crowd by Thomas Hardy. I don't think this is about like workers rights necessarily but I do think it's very much about like the everyday life of working people, specifically people who were like farm workers and like like the materiality of their life like you know and the, the really like I don't know like the really tactile or like I can't think of the right word but like the tactile relationship between them and their labour and the land specifically because it's a lot about like farm work. I don't know if that's something you'd be interested in reading, <laughs> Shannon, but the other thing that this might be harder to get a hold of, but it is in like a accessible modern edition, unlike some of the things that I, I could recommend people, and that's a play. So I don't know if you'd be that interested, but it's an Edwardian era play and it's kind of like women workers rights times like an Edwardian rom-com and it's called Diana of Dobson's by Cecily, Cicely Hamilton. And yeah, it's a play from 1908 and it's just about like these very exploited women workers who do like shop work, which is a, a, a specific thing during that era, and they like live above the shop and stuff and it's just about their like sort of sweated labour practices and trying to get away from them. So I hope you enjoy those. <laughs> the next person was Ash RT who said my favourite colour is grey, my most recent read is Victoria and Life and I'm interested in history, classics, translated fiction, nature, science, I'll read anything really. I found this one quite challenging because somebody saying grey is their favourite colour is like quite a shock to me. I, I don't I don't feel anything from grey, but that's obviously just my personal <laughs> feelings. I have two suggestions for you Ash. One is My Antonia by Willa Cather and I chose this because of its greyness. I don't know if you'll feel the same way if you read it and I do think like this isn't like a recommendation of like this book is perfect and brilliant it's more like this book is interesting to read and somewhat difficult to engage with and I guess that's how I feel a little bit about grey but I do also think that's about like the landscape that it, it evokes and yeah like how it talks about kind of like space and the atmosphere of it in a way. I did talk a bit more about this in like a lesbian erotic fiction video which I will link because I talk more about like the racial politics of it which I think are really bad but yeah it's from like 1918 and so it's a classic and yeah I don't know maybe it's something you'd be interested in. And the other one is a translated book from the Danish and that's The Employees by Olga Raven. This is like a sci-fi book but it's quite a short thing to read and it's not like very like intense sci-fi. I also think it's very much about like nature and science and, and like a kind of sensory experience with those two things and what those mean and kind of like is there even a divide between the two? What makes one one and what makes one the other? And, and what makes a human a human and, and a human not a human? <laughs> so yeah I hope you like those. For Shan from Pastoral Time she said that her favourite colour was red, 
recent books I enjoyed were Strange Creatures by Phoebe North and After the Winter by Guadalupe Nattle and that she's looking for something queer and witchy and maybe a little dark and arty. I actually don't read that much like witch, like actual witch fiction I think to be honest. Like I feel like I have more of an image of myself as doing that but I don't do it that often. Oh actually one more thing is that red is obviously the best colour so I shan't see anyone who got that right but that's fine. <laughs> yes I'm not entirely sure about these but like one and I don't know if you'll like them or if you've read them already but we'll see. So this is like a historical fiction book and that's The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave and it's set in 16, I don't know, 20s, 40s I want to say in Norway and it's about sort of witch trials so it is like literally, it, well it's sort of literally about witchcraft but it's not like witchy in that way but at the same time like it's extremely atmospheric and it is queer, like it's quite sinister. I wouldn't say it's particularly about art but that is also, I think if I remember correctly there is quite a lot about like sort of physical handwork of like you know sewing skins together to keep warm and things like that so I don't know if that's sort of the vibe you're looking for but I think you might like it it is quite kind of drawn out like it isn't like it does have plot but it is quite character like heavy I guess and the other book that I do think that is maybe like kind of more directly what you're looking for is a collection of short stories by Julia Armfield and that's Salt Slow maybe you've already read these too I'm sorry if you have but they are like yeah just like a collection of some of them more sinister than others but like definitely kind of like witchy and artsy and weird and stuff. I think my favourite one is like about this band and what happens when these girls like listen to their music. So yeah I hope those are okay for you. I also thought maybe like something a bit like The Bass Rock but maybe you've already read that one and also one book that is actually like explicitly witchy and is more fantasy but it is a novella so I know you don't like fantasy that much but like maybe you could deal with it for one thing is Of Sorrow and Such by Angela Slatter which I really love because it kind of goes into the like I don't know like the everyday work of witchcraft which is fun maybe some things to check out then moving on to the second half of post story time but who says my favorite color is brown recent reads have been annihilation they shoot horses don't they in the ballad of peck and rye and it's very much in the mood for anything i suggest which is very nice thank you so i had to think about brown and a little bit like gray it's a hard color for me to like connect to necessarily although like a kind of orangey like autumnal brown I can understand it's a nice color and I'm not sure if this is right but I would be really interested to see if you liked Confessions of the Fox by Geordie Rosenberg I think partially I was like oh this book because it has like a kind of brownie tinted cover it has this fantasy slash like portal world kind of energy but it's historical fiction and trans and Marxist it might be like a bit difficult to read it has this kind of frame narrative that is set in a particular historical time and then it has these like footnotes of an academic who's discovered this manuscript but it's quite fun too and kind of absurd so might be fun I also kind of thought about like you know why or like what I love about Mural Spark and you know that's like short, concise, quite stark, maybe sometimes quite bitter, sometimes kind of like unlikable characters but there's like often humour there and I thought maybe Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid would be like an interesting book to then read so that's a second recommendation and then I also thought I don't know if you've read this one but this is obviously a Mural Spark so like you, you either have it on your radar if you have already read it but that's The Driver's Seat which is like really sinister and intense and like kind of great but kind of awful at the same time I'm not really sure how I feel about it still but at the same time I kind of know that it's a great book but it is quite a lot about uh, violence against women so obviously like your mileage with that may vary. M says my favourite colour is green. Books I've read recently and loved are The Sound of the Wild Snail Eating by Elizabeth Topher Bailey which is a book I want to read and How We Fight for Our Lives by Saeed Jones. I want to read more memoirs and own voices. I found this question kind of difficult because I don't really read memoirs. I think the most recent memoir that I read was Braiding Sweetgrass but otherwise I, I don't think I've read a memoir the entire of of last year aside from that book which is sort of like a hybrid memoir too it's not really like a direct one I guess so like, I don't know what it's memoir but I would recommend that I do think it has like very green and wholesome energy so definitely not just because it's about the natural world but also because of that I think it's because like green is like a form of wholeness and I think that's what the book is really a lot about like beautiful mutual relationship between humans and the planet and the planet and itself. I did have a think and I think the most like recent candidate that I could recommend to you would be the book Closer Than Ice by David Winarowicz which is um, an incredible memoir. It's called like A Memoir of Disintegration or something like that. It's a very intense book and I I would definitely recommend kind of like figuring out if you think you're up for it. There's some really upsetting violence in there 
as well as like the, the homophobic violence of the state during the 80s, during the AIDS crisis specifically, and it's very much about the like really visceral and communal experience of having AIDS. It's really intense but I mean it's a, an incredible book, I would really recommend it. Virginia Woolf wrote a comment and it made me realise that I don't know your actual name. Sorry. <laughs> the comment is, I read the Nevermore series by Jessica Townsend recently and really loved it and would be interested in more children's slash young adult books that feel magical and cosy. Also interested in sapphic literature. My favourite colours are blue and green. I don't read like that many kind of like kids books and I don't really read YA books so I struggle a little bit with this. The most recent sort of kids book that I finished was The Pinho Egg, which is like magical and I, I think it does have some cosy vibes. It's by Diana Wynne Jones and like there's definitely, as usual, <laughs> some stuff in here that I wish wasn't, but it was generally nice. I don't know if you've read the series. This book is about, there's like a multiverse kind of thing going on and we're in one world and there's a girl called Marianne whose family are, are the Pinhos and they're like this magical family that they have to keep their witchcraft <laughs> secret from Crestomancy who's this like big guy and he he's a nine-lived enchanter which basically means he has extra lives than everybody else and is very very powerful as a result and so he kind of works he kind of is like the police he's definitely kind of like an authority and he controls or like decides what magic is okay and what magic should be prohibited and then like enforces that so yeah it's sort of about their the relationship between like the Pinhos and Crestomancy and like what happens but it's mostly about Marianne being like mistreated and kind of cat to some degree who's like a character who was in earlier books so yeah I did enjoy this one much more than a bunch of the others in the series partially because it's like about a girl more than just like boys so but yeah I mean I like kind of recommend it I think maybe it fits the vibe that you're looking for I also in the same series would recommend this one which is Magicians of Cap Caprona which is definitely magical I wouldn't say it's cozy but I really love this one I think it's really good it's like based on Romeo and Juliet in this like alternative Italy where it hasn't formed into a unified state, it's just in separate kind of constituencies, I can't, that's not the right word, but like, you know, principalities is maybe the right word. And it's about Tonino, who is like part of this magical family, can't remember if he's a Montana or a Petrochi, I think he's a Montana, and everybody else has magic but he doesn't, and it's sort of about that, but it's also like, yeah. And there's some like really intense stuff about Punch and Judy in here, but I thought it was really good. I also thought maybe like the Wee Free Man, which is the first in the Tiffany Aching series might be good. I don't know if you read that series, but it's wonderful. I really love it. As for sapphic literature, if you want like classic sapphic literature, I guess you can't really go wrong with Lolly Willows, I think, which is itself quite like a greeny book, I think. And it's a bit magical too. But if you're looking for like a more modern, although this is still from like the 90s or whatever, but like, you know, more modern kind of sapphic book, then I would definitely recommend Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters, which is one of my favourite books of all time. She did like write this sort of really lovely afterward to the, what, like 20th anniversary edition of it recently, which I would also recommend like reading alongside it. But yeah, it's lovely and, or maybe after you've read the book, because it does spoil a book, but I just mean like, because she like reflects on the development of her own approaches that she took in the book which makes the book better. But anyway, yeah, I hope those are okay. Not sure how good I feel about them, but there we go. Kelly L says, I read Lote because of your recommendation and loved it, so that's great, and I can die happy. I'm trying to read more classics this year. Is there a classic recommendation in the same vein as Lote? I read I read a lot of non-fiction. Is there a great non-fiction about women you love? My fave colour is blue. The thing is, there isn't anything as good as Lote, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> And there isn't anything quite like Lot either, I think, in the way that it animates a particular kind of like historical care work towards generally like black women, or like a sort of historical and literary care work, I guess. So in terms of a non-fiction book that I think is very similar to Lot and is also mostly about women and is also wonderful, I would definitely recommend Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments by Sadia Hartman, truly one of the best books I've ever read and really like sort of hand in hand with the project of Loat, I think. In terms of books that are similar to Loat in a different way and that are fictional, it's really hard. I mean, you could go the kind of direction of like reading like black modernist books, so like books from the Harlem Renaissance, like Passing by Nella Larson, which is great, and you know, Kane by Jean Toomer, but I mean, I didn't particularly like Kane, but it was like formative in, in the development of like Harlem literary culture I think. Yeah so you could go that direction but yeah I think honestly the the thing that I felt like that comes the most close to Lote is not actually a book it's a film it's The Watermelon Woman and it's an incredible film it's from the 90s I think yeah 95 maybe. It's this black lesbian film about this woman who's making a film about the watermelon woman who's this like particular actress from the 1930s I think and she's kind of trying to find her basically and try to like find out about her life. It's really great I would really really recommend checking it out. It's very sexy and it's very clever and it's very like just great. 
<laughs> and if anybody watching like has any book recommendations that they think are similar to Load, definitely let me know, like I would love to hear about them. Redhead Reading or Sophie asks or says I read The Well of Loneliness recently and would love for you to recommend me something else from the 1920s you think I'd like. My favourite colour is gold or green. So the antithesis to the Well of Loneliness is of course the incredible Ladies Almanac <laughs> by Juno Barnes which is just like extremely silly and very light-hearted and ridiculous and ex like deeply lesbian <laughs> so I definitely recommend checking that out that's from 1922 I also just finished reading the Le love letters of Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville West and I th this obviously some of it covers the 1920s it does go into the 30s and the very beginning of the 40s and I thought it was pretty delightful generally so I would definitely recommend that as an experience if you're interested you do get some like really interesting insights into like the literary culture at the time and also they just write so many books it's really impressive like <laughs> or my favorite book I think from the 1920s is To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf or I also thought The Quarry Wood is probably my most recent like favorite from the 1920s I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of them maybe you've already read To the Lighthouse I do think The Quarry Wood is quite like a greeny book and I do also think it has like some moments which are quite like goldeny so that's maybe more your vibe but yeah let me know if you could decide any of those also the, the quarry wood isn't queer so that's why I would maybe go to the like ladies almanac um, and I think with that you just have to kind of let it just like happen to you <laughs> and not try to like understand every single word on every single page because it's like <laughs> you know you just gotta like let Juna take you where she wants to take you which I guess is how you have to read a lot of her books <laughs> and then lastly Butch Poetic slash Amanda asks for a recommendation of a book from my MA dissertation that I think that they would enjoy and that they don't know their favourite colour this one's hard for me to decide the two main books that I wrote on were On the Threshold by Isabella Ford and The Image Breakers by Gertrude Dix like part of me wants to say I think more so on the threshold is is better for you but I'm not sure if that's actually true I think that the image breakers as a book has a lot more in it than the than, than on the threshold does so it's like on the threshold is quite like a surface level but like comedic but also you know it does it does take up some serious like feelings I think but it's not it's just not as like thick it's very short too whereas the image breakers is I, I kind of imagine it like happening in like black and white it's quite like it's quite like intense and it's also quite it's just like it's clumsy it's fragmented it's very like give and take it's like here's the liberatory potential and here's the failure and we're gonna like mesh them together and make you feel very com complicated about it all it is somewhat about the relationships between women in a way that like maybe on the threshold is again like much more surface level but I don't know I don't know I can't decide out of those two which I would suggest to you so I'll just try to explain the, the synopsis and then maybe you can decide because <laughs> like on the threshold is just like the satire of these like middle class art students in London in the 1880s and they're like swept away by socialist ideology but they're also two women so it's Lucretia and Kitty Kitty's very pretty it's important for you to know that and yeah it's sort of like about their friendship between each other it's also about their friendship or relationship with Beatrice who's this maid who works uh, for a while for them and then they try to sort of help and it's about their life together uh, attempted life together I suppose I should say and they're like att they're like visions for the future and then the image breakers follows two women but mostly centers on one uh, who's Leslie Arden but we begin with Rosalind Dangerfield and Leslie Arden who are these women both in Bristol again in the 1880s and they are socialists they're like supporting strikes but it basically follows their journeys kind of in two different directions Leslie follows a much more traditional path she does play around with like free love whereas Rosalind really takes up free love as a as a political statement rather than a personal one as one about comradeliness between men and women in this case but also as a kind of practice of love between everybody in political struggle and L Leslie makes these like black and white drawings and stuff and so it's also about like her working and trying to find work but it's also like she does fall in love with this man and it's sort of about like her and their relationship together and you know we get like snippets of Rosalind sinking in and out and up and down in the novel yeah I don't know which one of those sounds more interesting to you let me know <laughs> I do think some of the non-fiction that I read for my dissertation might be interesting to you I thought maybe Wisps of Violence producing public and private politics in the turn of the century no British novel would be interesting because this uses like a specific Marxist 
feminist literary criticism format which was really interesting for me to read about and I think you probably find it quite interesting too. And also a book by Leela Gandhi which is called Effective Communities Anti-Colonial Thought, Fantasy Act Radicalism and the Politics of Friendship which talks about like a range of different things and is quite like um, queer and interesting so I, I think that would be fun. And I think there's like also a bit about like mediums in it which is fun. So yeah I thought maybe you'd like that. And obviously also you should read Eleanor Marks like 1886 essay The Woman Question because that's great from my wife. So yeah I think those are all of the recommendations that I have for you today. I hope that that was like good and interesting and I have to go take the washing down now so I will um I mean put it up but whatever. I will talk to you when I next talk to you. Bye!